finding the ACA Small Business Boot Camp for this Tuesday, September 13th. We're excited to have you with us. I'm Robert Theobald, Small Business Ombudsman and Vice President of Small Business Services here at the Arizona Commerce Authority. And as we like to do, we like to start these out. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, we like to start them out by thanking all of our community partners. This is just a sample list of our community partners. We could not do these boot camp sessions without them, their time, their effort, and their expertise. So those not familiar with the Small Business Boot Camp, it is a webinar series that we've been doing for two and a half years now, designed to help small businesses as they start, plan, grow, scale, uh, whatever it may be, these boot camps are designed to bring experts from around the state, from our um, community partners, and bring their expertise to you and bring tips and tricks and tidbits and hacks and things that you can take back to your small business to make it better. Our goal is that you can get something out of today's presentation. Just one thing that you can take back today and move the needle forward in your business. So um, it's a, a great series. We love doing it. Um, and not only is it our webinars that we do every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., it is also a content library, as you see there on the screen. And then it is also a series of uh, workshops with some of our community partners. And so we'll talk about the, the next workshop is November 2nd. More details will come out about that soon, but you can mark that on your calendars. It's going to be an in-person with a Zoom component, but we really like to see people in person um, at that one. But let's talk about the content library because this is an amazing resource that's uh, we have available. So the content library is all of our recorded webinars and workshops. From the very beginning, we started recording each webinar with our experts, and now we have a diverse collection of about 230 recorded webinars um, in the content library. And there's no cost to access that. You can find it at the bottom of the bootcamp website. And if you don't want to look through all 230, you can select one of the filters. There's seven different business categories that you can select to help find the webinar that you're looking for. And if there's something you're looking for and you can't quite find it or not sure if it's the right topic, uh, feel free to reach out to us and you can reach out to myself or to Faith and we can guide you to a boot camp or two that may fit the needs you're looking for. The ACA also has a few other programs that can support small businesses. We have our small business services. We also have our workforce division and our Arizona Manufacturing Extension Partnership, or AZMEP. Um, in addition to these programs, we have our small business checklist. And this is a great online resource uh, to help entrepreneurs understand the commonly requested licensing and registration and compliance needs at the local, state, and federal level. It is a checklist that you go through, you select different things, and it'll give you the results in expandable boxes, and you can go through that and identify what you need. Uh, very in-depth, but if you're looking for a quicker um, answer, something that's just a real quick answer regarding licensing and registration, you may try Sally. You can see her there in the bottom right-hand corner of that screen. Uh, Sally is our virtual assistant uh, that can help you out. So uh, help us uh, improve Sally by uh, taking a look at it and sharing your feedback with us. Now let's jump to some updates. We have a few updates you want to share. So ASBA, the Arizona Small Business Association, not to be confused with the Small Business Administration, the SBA, federally, but ASBA is a local association. And they're hosting their BizCon Tucson on October 19th. Uh, they do a BizCon Phoenix and a Biz, and they're starting to do a BizCon Tucson. Uh, so BizCon Tucson is October 19th. We're going to post in the chat the link to register for that if you're interested, if you're in the Tucson area. Great opportunity to network and see some of the local businesses there that provide uh, support for small businesses. And then if you want to attend the, uh, if you're interested in the Phoenix Business Journal Small Business Awards, it's September 2nd. We'll post the link to that as well for information. And then on Wednesday, this Wednesday, tomorrow is the United Diversity Business Summit. And we'll post the information for that. That one's free to register. And we hope you can all make it. We've got uh, some folks from the ACA will be there. Uh, Mark Mormons from our team will be speaking at it as well. So we're excited to share that information. 
So with that, let's look at some other programs. We have our Small Business Digital Academy. And this six week program is that we do it every quarter and it's to help small businesses improve their digital capacity and their online presence. And we are currently accepting applications for our next cohort that will start in October. Uh, so we'll post, again, we'll post the link for this in the chat. You can take a look at it. And if it's something you're interested to commit to, uh, feel free to apply. And from there, we'll take a quick look at our upcoming sessions. We've got a lot going on. We've got those events that we, we shared. We've got the Digital Academy. We've got our upcoming boot camp webinars. We've got Building a Profitable Path. We have Navigating the Hot Job Market. And then we have Compelling Marketing to Unlock Your Authentic Brand Story. So if you want to talk about branding, that's going to be excellent. So we've got some awesome upcoming webinars we hope you join us for. But with that, we're going to jump into today's session. We have a returning presenter, Madhu Chada um, from WSI, and Jonathan Logan as well from WSI. Madhu was with us about two years ago. Great presentation on LinkedIn. So if you're interested in LinkedIn, you can find that in the content library. But we're glad to have her back to talk about some social media for the holidays. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to our experts from WSI, Madhu and Logan. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for the introduction. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. We are excited to have such a great group of eager people ready to get started on their holiday planning. When it comes to holidays, we know it's so important to have the right plan to reach new customers and bring people into your store. And even if you are not a social media enthusiast, with the right holiday social media strategy, you can drive meaningful results on social media this holiday season. So in this webinar, we will be sharing our six steps to developing a social media holiday plan. So you can make Q4 your best season and quarter yet. Feel free to type in questions in the Q&A box and we will address them at the end of the webinar or you can email us your questions, we'll be happy to answer them. So without further ado, type yes in the chat box if you are ready to take your holiday stress away and start planning. Jonathan and I are here today to help you get ready with your holiday marketing campaign. Yes, I see a lot of people. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm Madhu Chada, and I... I wanted to ask everyone, what is your favorite activity to do during, uh, you know, holiday season? My favorite activity is decorating my holiday, you know, tree. And I love brainstorming ideas with our clients, making sure they are ready for the holiday season. So I'm seeing a lot of people bake cookies, baking, shopping, that's for sure, <laughs> spending time with the family. Jonathan, uh, can you tell me what is your favorite activity to do? Absolutely. I love putting up Christmas lights, love going up on the roof and hanging them myself, doing it on the trees, driving around with family and seeing those. Um, always something that I love. And like same with Christine, I love hosting parties too, getting everyone together, family and um, pulling everyone close for the holidays. Good. So WSI is a, we are a full service digital marketing agencies and we help with small businesses with their website, SEO and social media marketing. Now I have a big question for you. There is no judgment for you here if you selected the last option, but when do you start your holiday shopping? My favorite is Black Friday when I want to see all the deals online and in stores. And this is generally to start thinking about when do I get my holiday shopping done so we can start thinking about marketing campaigns. So I'm seeing a lot of people early November. Some people start in October. Great. So you guys have thought about how you shop. Now take a look at how numbers stack up. According to local IQ, 56% of the shoppers admit to making holiday purchases at the last minute. 
Um, 56 of the shoppers complete their holiday shopping before December this year, and 91% of the shoppers admit to making holiday purchases at the last minute. And that's why I said, no judgment if you make purchases at the last minute, because at the end of the day, that's what people do. And 30% of those people say that last minute grabs typically happen between week or two before, and 7% say they will even do holiday spending on the day off. And Cyber Week takes up 17% of the holiday spending. This year, Black Friday and Cyber Monday combined have been projected to generate over 10 billion in sales this year. Last couple of years due to pandemic, we are seeing that people are doing more online shopping uh, than before and this number is increasing and upcoming holiday season is going to be more competitive due to current economic conditions. So you have some numbers to think about. And now let's take a look at the agenda for today's webinar and how we are going to put this all together. <clears throat> so plan early, why it's important to start now, even though it is September. Goal setting, you need to know where you want to be so you can map out how to get there. Social tracking, how to know when something is working and when it's not working. Creating and scheduling, now that you have your plan, how you are going to execute on it. Stocking stuffers, few more add-ons to entice your audiences and your customers. Monitoring results, now that you have got everything set up, and delivering according to plan, we need to check if it's working. Next. So the first thing we are going to go over is plan early. So why we are talking about Christmas in September? Well, uh, most people start to make their holiday shopping list in October, right after the fall has started, kids are back to school, they are done with their holidays and vacations, they are now looking to Christmas. They start to make their shopping list in the middle of October when new things are released, new products are out. And on average, people need to interact with your brand seven times before making a purchase decision. The more that you can get in front of them, the more likely they will make a purchase decision with your brand. Also, competition starts to increase with ad placements for the holiday season. So if you start planning early now for early October launch, you will get more viewership in the, these months than you probably will towards the holidays. Just because of the fact that there are going to be more brands, especially big brands like Amazon, Walmart, who are going to be competing for those social ad spaces. And also creating content, it takes time, especially creating branded content for product and services. It can take up to an hour per post to design it, going from graphic design to photos of your products to actually writing the copy, creating links, getting the promo code set up, getting the UTM tracking tag set up, so if you are going to do two to three posts per week during the holiday season, let's say from October 15 until Christmas Eve, that's about 20 to 30 posts, which is um, 20 to 30 hours of work. So in order to mitigate that, you need to make sure that you start early, plan it out and create an event calendar for yourself. Jonathan, I'm going to turn it over to you so you can go over the important dates, holiday dates, which we need to look at. Absolutely, thanks, Madhu. Uh, so it's really important for you to sit down and identify the holidays that you want to base your promotions around in advance. Because Adu is mentioning that they need to see the ads multiple times before they're converting. It's a high competition. It's gonna take you time to prepare everything. And you know, you're gonna be spending time with your family and baking cookies and going shopping yourself. So you want to be prepared for when these dates come. So the very first thing that you'll want to do is just sit down and mark your calendars for the important dates. Do you wanna plan a Halloween promotion? Do you have a spooky offer that you can put out? 
Um, are you going to jump on the Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Small Business Saturday, uh, really kick off to the holiday season, all those kind of back to back on uh, the end of November? Uh, or are you going to wait until December and maybe do a 12 days of Christmas promotion, something for Hanukkah or for the end of the year after Christmas for New Year's, New, new Year, New You? Do you have a product or service that can line up with that angle? It's really important for you to mark your calendars and start planning in advance, specifically because of the competition and how many times you need to make an impression with your audience before they convert. Um, you know, you can treat your audience and your goal almost like a tree. And this is a sales funnel, almost like flipped upside down. So they're starting from the bottom. They're a new customer seeing you for the very first time. Um, and we want to bring them to the customer for life. We want to have them go up branch by branch. Um, because the very first time they see your content of the seven plus times they need to see you before they make a purchasing decision. The first time they see you, they might just scroll by you in the newsfeed. The second time they might recognize your business name or your product. The third time they start thinking about, is this something that they could benefit from? The fourth time they're doing something else and don't feel like purchasing. So you need to repeat the impressions, which is why it's important and really recommended for you to be running some brand awareness campaigns in advance of the holiday season. And this is something that your competitors most likely aren't doing. Uh, they're waiting last minute until the holiday to start their ad, but then you're one out of hundreds of ads they're seeing all trying to sell them something during the holiday. You need to have that brand recognition from the start so they recognize you if when the holiday season's here, they're motivated to move forward and make a purchase after seeing your ad. So people will be moving up the branches every time they see your brand awareness campaign, uh, which is why you need to be starting to, to build those and start planning months in advance. Because failing to plan is planning to fail, which is a great quote. I love it from Benjamin Franklin. Um, you recognize that an average conversion rate for social media is going to be around two to 5%, meaning the earlier you're able to start advertising, the fuller your tree is going to be. There's going to be more people that are aware of your business, what your promotion is. They're considering buying you already. Then they see your ad during the holiday season. They see that there's a discount or a special offer and they're ready to, to move forward with that. Uh, so this is really important for you to start planning in advance, mark your calendars and recognize that you want to be promoting your product, even if it's not on special yet, a month in advance before your promotional season starts. Uh, the next thing that we want to look at is goal setting, how we're going to, you know, plan out and have a successful holiday season by identifying what it is that we want to accomplish and preparing all the necessary materials. So we have almost like a wish list here. What are the things that uh, in an ideal world we can have in place to have a successful holiday season? Uh, so you want to look at your products and services. What are you willing to discount? What products and services are the trendiest or the hottest for the holiday season? You can also look at what products or services have the highest profit margins for you. That way you can offer a great discount on that to your customers. Uh, you also need to start planning out your content, thinking about how you want to position your sales and products. How will your product make a good gift? What problem does your service solve? What discounts and sales are people going to be able to take advantage of? When we have those things in place, we also should identify what budget we have for the holiday season. And all of these questions we're asking ourselves are going to relate back to the very first thing on our list, which is what is our overall goal? Is our goal to increase sales 20% this holiday season? Is it to sell out of a product that we're retiring? Uh, that way we can get rid of old inventory. Is it to generate a ton of leads for the coming year for your services? Um, you want to identify what that goal is and make sure that everything else on the list is in support of that goal. The products that you're promoting are going to help you accomplish that. Uh, your budget you have is enough for you to be able to realistically accomplish that. You're not going to get a million dollars in sales by spending a thousand dollars. 
that's just not how the math adds up. You need to have, you know, at least a, um, you know, one tenth of what your goal is to potentially get there and be successful. So if you want $10,000 in sales, you should be prepared at least to spend $1,000 in your ads. And that's on like a really successful campaign there. So you really want to spend some time planning out what your goals are uh, and what you have in your pocket to be able to accomplish that. And I'm going to do that at the beginning, you know, you could be spending an hour per post, an hour per ad creating those. So you really want to be prepared in advance and recognize everything that you're going to need to accomplish your goal. Uh, the next thing that we look at is ensuring that we have all of our tracking in place to have a successful holiday season. Um, you could have all the sales in the world, but unless you have tracking in place, you're not going to know where they're coming from, which is going to have you most handicapped in that holiday season. You're not going to be able to identify what's working for you and where you should focus your efforts uh, and what you should double down with next year during your, your coming holiday season. So we have our audience express here and everything on here is powered by the Metapixel. So the Metapixel is a free tool. It's a line of code that you install on your website and it connects all of the actions that happen on your website to social media users and your campaigns. So you're able to see from an ad how many people visited your site. You're able to see um, how many pages, what type, how long they spent on the site, uh, how, what purchases they made on the site. You can also see if maybe they built a cart, started to check out, and then backed out for some reason. It's going to help you understand how your campaign is working, what's successful, and it's going to be able to identify opportunities for improvement as well. So this pixel is powering the audience express here, and it's made up of four different carts. We're gonna start with uh, the simplest, which is where you start with your social media campaigns is audience building. So you're able to, with social media campaigns, uh, reach people, a, a cold audience based off of their interests and demographic information. So a good um, kind of, um, thing for you to do in your business is start taking note of who your customers are. What are their age ranges? What are their genders? What types of clothes are they wearing? What type of car do they drive? Talk to them, have a conversation and figure out what they're interested in. So you can start to understand your customer, what their, who they are, what their needs are. So you can develop an audience to reach new customers. So the audience building aspect of your social media campaigns is going to allow you to reach new people. And if you have that Metapixel, you can understand who of those new people are taking action and are actually interested in your brand. From there, you start building custom audiences. So these audiences are built up people who have already interacted with your brand. They could have clicked on your ad, they could have watched your video, they could have commented on a post. Uh, they may have also been to your website, looked at a specific product. Uh, they could have uh, purchased something or added things to their cart, but not yet purchased. So you're able to build custom audiences from the uh, different metrics you have powered by the pixel. Uh, from there, you know, custom audiences are great because you're able to have the person move from their first impression to their seventh impression to purchasing your item and track them along that journey. Uh, what custom audiences also allow you to do is create what is called a lookalike audience. So a lookalike audience will take your custom audience, the people that are interacting with your business, purchasing your product, and it's going to mirror that audience with new people that share the same demographics and interests. So, you know, imagine if you were in a store, if you have that and someone comes through and you gave them a survey and there were a hundred questions on that survey about their life. And they said, yeah, I'll sit down and fill this out for you. And they just gave you everything about themselves. What Facebook is doing is going to find people that answered that same survey, 99 out of the hundred questions the same way. So you're able to find your next best customer because they have the same interests, the same demographics, the same lifestyle as your current customers. So lookalike audiences are a really powerful way to be able to uh, develop new audiences, reach cold people without having to build out the metrics yourself. 
And finally, we have your email lists, which is the ability that Meta allows for you to upload an email or a customer list to the system, and they match it to an individual's profile. So if you have 2,000 people on your email list, you can download that upload it to Facebook and Instagram, they'll match it to the user and you're able to advertise to that person. They're not going to tell you that this email is connected to a specific profile, but they're gonna say, we match this to someone and you can advertise to them if you'd like. So this is a great way if you have people that are your customers and you want to get them to purchase again, uh, or you have a list of prospects and you wanna push them to the point of conversion. You can use the email lists to be able to advertise to those specific individuals. Again, this is all powered by the Metapixel. So along with these campaigns targeting these different audiences, you're able to track the success. Without that pixel in place, you're not gonna be able to see how many uh, purchases are coming from a specific Facebook ad or your campaigns in general. Um, you're not able to identify where there may be shortcomings. So this is one of the most powerful things that you can use. Uh, and it's kind of amazing. It's a free tool that they have. Uh, and a lot of people don't take advantage of it. Uh, so I do recommend you to jump on that as soon as possible, because the longer it's installed on your website, the more information it has on who the person that typically is that visits your site and what they're interested in. So Facebook can help you deliver more powerful advertisements. Uh, the next thing we want to take a look at is once you have that tracking in place, you started building your audiences, is creating and, and scheduling out all of this content, how we can make sure that we have a successful holiday season, what exactly we need to go through, what we need to create, and what we need to schedule out. Because it's going to bring you to one of two scenarios. You're either going to end up on the naughty knit list or you're going to end up on the nice list. You're going to end up on the naughty list if you don't really start planning. You're procrastinating in September. Oops. Uh, you're procrastinating in September. You're not able to dedicate some time and plan out what holidays and which promotions you want to take advantage of. You forget to do the brand awareness ahead of time. You're not running those advertisements for the month leading up to your holiday promotion or sale. You maybe forget to launch them. You're delayed at launching the holiday promotion and what happens is that you fail to have a successful holiday season. We want you on the nice list. We want you to be able to have a successful holiday year over year. And uh, if you start this now, next year, to be able to review this year's data, to be able to set more realistic goals, have the pixel installed, have coupon codes created, which is another great way to track things by giving social media specific coupons, choosing your hashtags, all of that hopefully is getting planned out in September into early October. You have your email uh, newsletter created to pull in the, the email lists and start to be able to advertise to your best customers or hopeful prospects. You're launching your holiday promotions on time. You're launching last minute advances. If you have leftover products or not quite meeting your goals, you're able to follow up with a last minute sale or promotion. Uh, you're doing all these things and you're going to end up on the nice list and you're going to have a really successful holiday season. Uh, so there's a lot that comes into play here. So we do have a holiday checklist for you. It's a literally point by point of everything you'll need to do to have a successful holiday season from planning, tracking, promotion, content, advertisements, uh, send an email over to Madhu, her email is right here on the screen, and maybe you can type it into chat as well. We'll send you over that PDF um, so you can go through this holiday checklist. We'll have a digital version you can use and also a printout version if you're like myself and prefer to use a little pen and paper every now and then. Uh, so holiday checklist is going to be super valuable for you, keep you on track and keep you on the nice list. Uh, and when you are moving along and you have everything planned, you may be looking for additional ways to really engage your audience and leverage social media for all it can be. So we do have some stocking stuffers, some ways that you can leverage your community with contests and giveaways. So in addition to 
promotions that you may run and you an advertisement 20% off, you want to look at ways that you can leverage your community. So we have a collection of contests and giveaway ideas for you to be able to utilize. Uh, and the first kind of ones on here are very familiar things that you may see businesses doing on social media already, but we have some other ones on here, some creative options for you to be able to stand out and really engage with your audience. Um, you know, giveaways, that's something that I think everyone's heard of on social media, uh, like follow us to be entered to win something. Uh, you know, we're going to give a product away for free. We're going to give you a gift card to a local business. Uh, it's something that's pretty straightforward. It's asking people to like, to follow, to comment, to tag, to just engage with your brand in that post specifically. Uh, this is great because it helps your brand spread out into different social groups. If uh, my friend tags me in a post or comments on it or likes it, it has a chance of showing up in my own news feed as I'm scrolling along. So you're able to get additional brand impressions and uh, what accounts to a social referral in ways. Because if people see their friends interacting with your business, it tells them that they you know, stand by and would recommend your business without directly saying it. Um, because people are taking the time out of their day to interact with you. They may have seen your product or your service. Maybe you're a fencing company and they just had a fence come up and they see you, them interacting with your profile. They're going to recognize that you are the fencing company. They love that fence and that person might reach out to you as well. So it's a great way to reach more people, but it's uh, one of the most you know, simple ways and does require a bit of follow-up on your end. You need to go and pull the list of everyone that liked or commented or followed. You need to pick randomly from that. You need to be able to get them uh, their, their prize. So it can be a little bit time consuming too. Uh, which is why I love the idea for caption contests. So caption contests are similar to giveaways in that they're going to spread your brand into new audiences, but a caption contest has people spend more time thinking about your brand in a active way. So building a stronger connection in their mind between your brand and themselves. So a caption contest could be, you know, we need your help. Caption this photo, our team's going to pick a winner and that person gets a, a prize. So you'll need to have an interesting photo, something that invokes emotion or, or humor. Uh, and what people, you know, are able to do there is spend some time thinking of a caption for your photo. So that's two minutes that person has stopped scrolling, stopped looking at other things and is spending their time just focusing on your brand. So once they do that, they're never gonna forget you. You're gonna, you're gonna be burnt into their mind because they just spent two minutes only thinking about your brand and thinking of something funny. Uh, so it's a great way to build a stronger connection to people. Uh, it, it can be more engaging than a giveaway as well because other people are going to want to look at the captions that people are coming up with. So it's a little bit more fun for the individual and it makes it a little bit easier for your team because you just need to look at the captions and either pick one at random or pick your favorite for that person to, to win a potential prize. Uh, something else that I love um, and you may have seen this yourself if you know Zeke's Pizza. Uh, they do in-person contests all the time. I love what they're doing uh, with these painted rocks that they leave around. So they post on social media that they've left painted rocks in certain areas. And if you find one and bring it in store, you'll get a free slice of pizza. Uh, this is a great opportunity. You know, in-person can be as simple as asking people to come into your store and say they saw your post on social media or give you uh, a coupon verbally that you um, shared on social media. It's a great way to drive in-person actions. And during the holiday season and shopping, a lot of people do it in, in groups. Uh, they'll go out with their friends and go shopping and check off a bunch of people on their lists. So if one person sees that, they're going to tell their friends and most likely bring multiple people with them into store to, to take advantage of that. And with something like Zeke's Pizza, where you get a free slice, I mean, I'm a big guy. I'm not just going to eat one slice. If I go in there, I'm going to get one free slice, and then maybe I'll order another slice and a drink and be on my way. So it's a great way to, 
to upsell to the individual by giving, getting them in store, giving them a taste of um, what you have to offer and hopefully them purchasing more. Uh, we can also do Mad Lib contests. So Mad Libs are similar to captions, but a little bit easier for people to participate in. Uh, it could be something as simple as, you know, my favorite part of the holidays is blank. And we asked you a similar question at the start of this. It was very easy for you to be able to say, this is my favorite part of the holidays. I love cooking. I love hosting. I love looking at Christmas lights. Uh, it's easy for people to engage with your brand this way because they're not coming up with the full caption. They're just coming up with filling in the blank itself. Uh, it can be just as fun though, um, but they are spending less time actively thinking about and engaging with your brand, but it's a little bit easier on your end because with the caption contest, you really need a photo that invokes something. With the Mad Lib, the photo can be everything. They're just filling in the blank of the caption itself. Uh, and finally, we have hashtags, and this can be something that can be utilized online and offline. So everyone, you know, hashtag, something that you can include on the post. Our, our goal here is to have other people create content tagging your business in it. Um, so this could be as simple as you posting something that we're doing a photo contest, upload your photo of our product or upload the photo of your favorite thing during the holidays tag our business in it and you have a chance to win. Uh, this has people creating content, which is, you know, they're spending time actively engaging and thinking about your brand and taking the time to go and capture a photo. So they're never going to forget you. Um, the other thing is that uh, I love to, to bring it as a, as a thank you to people that are supporting you. So in an online order, putting a business card in there that says, you know, thank you. We'd love to see your, your thoughts and feedback, create a post and tag us on Instagram with this tag. Um, also like in store, if someone purchases, you can easily drop a business card in their bag that has your social handles and invites them to create content and tag you in it. Uh, it's a great way to build, you know, repeat business and loyalty because people are willing to put their, their name, their face, their account behind your brand and share content, which is going to help bring traffic to you, uh, as well as building excitement around who you are and what they can take advantage of. Um, so hashtags, I do recommend if you could, you know, print out um, a few business cards and include those with any orders or in store when people purchase and encouraging them to share content on social media. Um, so we have planned, we have set our creation schedule. Our next step is to, you know, monitor results and ensure that everything is going according to plan. Uh, and what are the best ways to make sure things are going according to plan? So we have a few tools that we utilize here. One of the most important is going to be split tests or A-B tests, because ultimately, um, we, we don't know, we can make our best assumption, but we don't know how people are going to react to something until we show it to them and give them the opportunity to respond. You may feel that you've created something and it's the best photo that you've ever seen. It's the most hilarious caption. It's a great offer, but when you run it, it could have no results compared to something which you don't like. You think it's simple, but you want to try it anyways. An A-B test, what that allows you to do is um, compare two audiences or two offers or two photos or two calls to action. You're testing one specific thing for what performs better. And what Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, what they're going to do is run both simultaneously to you know, similar people, and they're going to give you a score on which one was more successful. You'll have multiple metrics, which one reached more people, which one had more clicks, which one had more conversions. Uh, so you will need to have a, a goal in place for what you want to accomplish. You know, you wanna find the highest converting ad, perfect, run a split test between your two offers and determine what worked best. Uh, we also want to make sure with that Metapixel installed that we have the conversion tracking in place. Uh, we want to make people that when they, they check out, we know that they've checked out, we're able to see how many checkouts came from our ad and how successful they were individually. Because when we're able to determine what was successful, we're able to start doubling down on those campaigns. 
So if one campaign brings you a conversion at half the cost of another, pause the one that's double the cost, move that money into the one that was working successful uh, and really double down and, and focus your funds on what's working well for your business. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're leveraging remarketing, which is part of that audience express powered by that meta pixel. Remarketing is reaching the people that have already engaged with your brand in some way. That's going to be one of the most impactful decisions you can make. Uh, it, most people that are advertising, you know, your competitors on social media are just going in there and saying, I want people in this mile radius, this age range, and they run their ads. Using remarketing, you're able to hit the people that have been to your website, that have engaged with your content, because uh, we know that it takes people seven plus times before they're ready to convert with your business. Remarketing ensures that you show an ad to them over and over and over again until they get to the point where they click buy. Uh, and finally, you want to make sure you have a way to measure your offline results. If people are coming in store with you or calling you over the phone, they're not purchasing on over your website. You want to make sure you have a way to track those offline conversions. Uh, this can be as simple as asking people if they had seen you on social media, but I do recommend to have some sort of, you know, discount code or something like that that they could give you, you know, Facebook Xmas 22 or something like that. So you know that the sale came from Facebook. It was for your holiday special of 2022. Uh, the offline conversions, there's so many people that see something, remember it, and then go into your store or call you and take actions a day or two later. Uh, it'll be really important for you to have that in place in order to have a successful holiday season. Um, so one of the things that, you know, I love about this is that we have such a big group of people here today that have different types of businesses and different goals for the holiday season. So I think we should take a look at some of the key takeaways and start diving into those questions. Uh, so what are the, our, our key takeaways for today, Madhu? Oh, I think you're muted. All right, so here are the key takeaways. Uh, plan early, determine your products, promotions, goals, and holidays at least two months in advance. Create early, prepare your content early. It takes time, capture photos, videos, create graphics, and write captions, and track everything. Install the free Metapixel. I saw some questions people were asking, it's a paid or free. It's a free Metapixel tool. Set up and test conversions, create coupon codes, and build custom audiences. And build awareness early. Promote your products week in advance to build uh, interest and A-B test. Remember, uh, we said earlier that people need to interact with their brand at least seven times before making a purchase decision. And double down. Focus on focus your advertising spend on the campaigns that are performing best with customers not your personal favorite. All right. I know it sounds like a lot, uh, but we can help you if you have any questions. And Jonathan, I am seeing a lot of questions in Q&A box. So let's jump into the questions. All right. So the first question is from Matthew uh, and he's asking, does Metapixel only track actions between Facebook and Instagram or does it have a further reach than that? Mm -hmm. So the Metapixel will be the code installed on the website. It's going to track everything that happens on your website, similar to other analytical tools. It'll tell you how many page views, it'll tell you how many, what pages were looked at, what actions happened. What the Metapixel does with that information is connects those actions to a Facebook or Instagram account. So it's focused on Facebook and Instagram, but what it's doing is saying you had a website visitor, was that website visitor logged into Facebook or Instagram on their computer or on their phone? Yes, okay, we can say it came from a, a Facebook user then. So it allows you to track those, those actions that people are taking uh, and allows you to remarket to them on Facebook and Instagram. So you know they've interacted with your brand already, you show them another ad to get them to the conversion point. Okay. Uh, so it is Instagram and Facebook focused, but 
mostly on the ads. Otherwise, it's pulling in all data from your website for all users. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Um, so Alex is asking, uh, building lookalike audiences from your email list, is this still a good strategy? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, your email list, whether they're customers of yours already or prospects, it's taking the people that you know are interested in your business and a lookalike audience will create a new group of people that share similar interests to them. So if your email lists are valuable to you, creating a lookalike audience from that will find new people that are hopefully going to be equally as valuable to you in the long term. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alex's question is another question. Would you recommend to run an ads based on Meta's recommendations? Um, so, I mean, Meta makes a few recommendations mm -hmm. there on different ad types to run or different audience demographic selections to pick. Uh, Meta does make, you know, some good recommendations there, but it kind of depends on what you're trying to accomplish, what your goals are. If you're looking to sell a product, I would start with running brand awareness campaigns for at least one month prior to when you want to launch your holiday promotion to introduce people to your product, to get them interested, to get them considering to buy your product before they see that promotion and reason to purchase today. Uh, after your brand awareness campaigns, you're either going to want to start running website traffic or conversion ads. Uh, so with those ad types, uh, you're going to focus on driving a person to your site to purchase. Website traffic you should use if you're seeing less than 300 online sales in any given month. If you're seeing more than that, you should be using conversion ads. Uh, the reason why it's 300 is because Facebook and Instagram uh, need to have enough information for what's happening on your site in order to reach new people. So if you're under 300 sales, we recommend website traffic because you're able to drive more people to your site. If you have 300, over 300 sales a month, you have enough information where you can be more successful with the conversion ads, which will drive less people to the site, the ones that are more likely to, to hit buy. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So uh, Jonathan, somebody's asking, what is Pixel? Can you clarify a little bit about this Pixel, Facebook Pixel? Yeah. I uh, also have some questions on like, where do you, you get it and how do you install it? So um, it's part of Meta's business manager, which is this tool that um, manages your Facebook and Instagram business account. Uh, it is a asset in that it's free. You have to go into your business manager and go into your um, audience tools to create the pixel. You can also Google um meta pixel creation and one of the first links would be the the setup for this mm -hmm. uh going through it you'll give meta your website and they'll give you back a line of code you need to put that line of code into your metadata of your website so where you tell search engines and facebook mm -hmm. what your pages are about you'll copy and paste it it's pretty simple and straightforward to get installed uh, and then you'll go back to facebook and they'll allow you to open up your site and if you click on a button, it'll ask you what this button is. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to go through and say, this is purchase. This is submit a contact form. Uh, you only need to do it once. Any button that does that same thing, it will automatically match it. So if you have like 500 items to purchase on your site, you only need to tell it what purchases once. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So it's a free tool. It is uh, maybe a little technical because it is like a, a line of code, but it's very easy to do. They really walk you through it and give you step-by-step -step instructions on how mm -hmm. to get that installed. Yes. All right. So the next question is from DJ. What is your perspective on using a blog and helping your local area businesses promote their sales, et cetera? Yeah. Uh, so using blogs are great. Uh, they allow you to dive more detail into your product, or your service, or you know, a list of products. Uh, during the holiday season, people are always trying to think of what should I get the people that I love? What is a good gift to give? They might have ideas. They might have grabbed things over the course of the year, but people are ultimately looking to find something that people that they care about will love. So when you're looking at your blogs, you want to take it with that angle. So you'll see a lot of people that share blog content. You know, here's the top five gifts to give to people that are blank. 
Uh, so if you have a blog that has a few of your products on it that are uh, you can combine together into you know great gift ideas, or if you have a service, you can combine that into um, why it's important to to offer this or take advantage of it during the holiday season. People that want more information that are interested in learning about um, you know what this tool is. Is it the best gift to give, or am I going to get something and it's going to be low quality? Like those types of people care about blogs and care about reviews. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely blogging is a, a recommended strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And next question is from Pamela. What is the best practice today for hashtags? Yeah. Uh, so with hashtags, I, there's a few best practices. There's like how many I should use on my posts. There's what type of hashtags I should use and where I should use them. Um, so for, um, I'll say like Instagram specifically, because that's where hashtags really are thriving. Uh, you should have on a regular post seven to 10 hashtags at the, really the max. Uh, you can have up to 30, but what performs best is seven to 10. Um, if you're doing a reel, it should be about three hashtags, even less than that. Um, and where they should go, they can go in the caption, they can go into a comment on the post itself. And the hashtags that I prefer using are local hashtags. So hashtag and find your local area. You know, is it, is it going to be hashtag Phoenix, hashtag Phoenix AZ, hashtag Phoenix Arizona. So find those local hashtags and also find your niche local hashtags. So if you're a pizza place, there's going to be hashtag Arizona pizza as one of the top tags that you should use. This does two things. One, it, it helps you show up in the local feeds to your audience as they get recommended content near them. Uh, and when people are searching for something, if I wanna find a restaurant to go eat at or find a local jeweler, if I just search jeweler or pizza restaurant, or anything like that, I'm gonna get so many options from around the whole country or around the whole world. So using the location tags, keep it focused on your area itself. Okay. So next question is from Christine. Uh, does the caption have to be a picture of your product or just a random picture? It can be a random picture, um, but if it's a, something that relates to your product, it has a stronger brand connection to you and gets people really focused on thinking about your brand. Um, but it can certainly be just a photo, a meme that you find online or something like that, that you want people to caption. Um, you know, I've seen, plenty of, of things of um, anything from, you know, funny picture of, of Santa or, um, you know, a Halloween uh, with a pumpkin. So that word was gone to me for some reason, like a pumpkin that's starting to, to rot or something like that. And it's Thanksgiving now uh, or a Christmas tree going up while Thanksgiving dinner's out. Like you can find a, some fun photo ideas there. Uh, it gets people talking about you and is a great way to engage your audience. But if you can think of a way to integrate your brand, it's more meaningful to you. It can be as simple as your product on the table. Uh, it could be as simple as even just adding your, your logo to the picture itself, uh, but do try to implement your business in some way. Mm -hmm. So next question is from Christine. Uh, should you use some of these ideas with SMS or just social media? Yeah. Um, so, you know, texting that can be a great opportunity for a lot of these different ideas, uh, especially if we go back to the contests, letting people know of a promotional contest that you might be running. Um, I would love if like, you could send out a, a text message bus about a specific holiday promotion. You know, if you're planning on doing a 12 days of Christmas, have a new promotion plan 12 days in a row, um, sending out a text message and saying that you're going to be doing this gives people a reason to follow you on social, continually check into your page over those two weeks almost. Uh, they'll know that there's different deals every day. So they, there's a reason to, to take action when they see something that they like. Uh, I also love the idea of flash sales, which is a great way for to send out a text message. Hey, in 30 minutes, in an hour, we're gonna have a flash sale on this product. You know, texting is very direct. People see that almost right away. People are always on their phone. So if you send them a text for a flash sale, it's going to catch their attention and they're going to maybe have some FOMO, some uh, fear of missing out of on that deal. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Okay, so the next question is from Christine. How and where do you upload your email list to Facebook? Mm -hmm. I don't know, Jonathan, is it you know, time to show that, how to do that? Yeah, that would be on your Facebook ad account directly. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be an option when you're building your ad and choosing who it is that you're targeting. You'll have the ability to create a custom audience based off of your, your email list itself. Um, and we might have a second for me to be able to open up Ads Manager and show you. But while I do that, let's ask the next question and we can- All right, through. okay. Um, so while we are looking into that, how do I, okay. So we have a great question from Nishia. She is a coach and she's saying, how do I tailor this to my coaching and consulting business? Mm -hmm. um, great question. So, you know, looking back at the wish list, what are your goals? Are you looking to get more leads generated, more people signed up for a specific class that you're offering? Do you have a promotion behind this or is it just going to be something where you're looking to take advantage of the holiday season and get people booked with you? Uh, you know, it pays to have a reason for people to take action now. Holiday season is going to be super busy. People are balancing between their own plans and stresses with work and things with that and holiday shopping, where if they don't have the reason to take action now, they might not. Um, but something that I love doing, and I think it connects well with the holidays, even if you don't have a promotion, is connecting a... Uh, you know, a sign up for a lead or a consultation to some charity work. So saying something like, hey, sign up for this class or sign up for a consultation, submit this form. And what you'll do is make a donation of a set amount to like a children's charity of their choice. Uh, so the expectation could even be that they have to meet with you. They will have to tell you the charity during the call. So no one just signs up and blows you off. Um, and it's a great way to get people on the phone and give them a reason to do this now, even if you're not giving them a, uh, you know, a discount on it, they can hear you out, learn about your, your services, learn about the, the different classes that you might have and make their decision from there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jonathan. And um, I have a question from Susan Edwards. She's saying that my product is not cheap. How do I advertise to audiences that can afford my pepper and marinade? Yeah. Um, so if your products, you know, on the more expensive side, there are options on uh, the Facebook targeting to reach people by their demographic data by income. So do they have, are they in the top 5%? Are they in the top 10%, the top 25%, the top 50% of the income in the areas that you've selected? So that's a perfect way to reach people. You can also look at other lifestyle characteristics. They might drive a more expensive car. They might have a higher level of education. They might have a, um, you know, anything that's related to maybe they like travel a lot. You have all of those options to target people that have a higher level of, of income than mm -hmm. uh, you might reach without using those options. Yeah. Because Susan is mentioning that she has given so many samples people love, but they don't buy. How do I get sales basically? Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you're giving samples and people love the samples, but they don't buy, you kind of need to see why that's happening. Is it that the sample is enough for them to, to get by and they don't need to, to purchase for a little bit? Um, and what's their incentive, can they get multiple free samples? Um, but I do love to have a reason to, to get them to purchase. You know, if they're getting that free sample, are you getting information from them? Do you have their, their email list so you can continue to advertise to them? Um, also giving people a, you know, thank you discount, like you got your free sample, now make your first order and save 10%. Uh, if it's something that they can continually buy and re-up on, it's an opportunity for you to say, hey, um, you know, it's going to be 10% off your first order, but you're going to be locked in to reorder for three months or something mm -hmm. like that. Sure. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. Do you have a quick minute to show that or uh, that's... Um, I was trying to get it open up and it, Facebook was... Yeah, really, I don't know. I mean, uh, Faith, do we have time to show that or people we, can we, get we it? Can show, we can show it real okay. quick. Okay. All right. 
And, and just a reminder why Jonathan's pulling that up, I want to remind everybody, you know, if you want to dive deeper into some of your uh, internet and, and website and social media, we have our digital academy. You can uh, apply for that program that's coming up in, in October. Um, so don't forget to check that out. Faith posted that link earlier in the chat. So I'll just scroll backwards, yes. but uh, mm -hmm. Jonathan, go ahead. You find okay. it. I'll need to close this a little bit. Let me bring this over. So this is your, from your ad accounts. So we're already in your ad account. We're already building an ad itself. So the ad account, to, um, when you choose your ad, you'll choose what type of, what your objective is. Is it page likes? Is it website traffic? Is it conversion? Uh, then you'll choose your budget, when you wanna run the ad and you'll get to the part of building your audience. So when you're building your audience, it's going to allow you to choose your location data, some age and gender demographics. We'll get, also give you the option to create a custom audience. When you choose custom audience, it will give you your source options. Is it your website? Is it coming from a video or a Facebook page? Um, customer list is the option we're looking for to upload your email list. When you choose customer list, you can even import it from MailChimp. Otherwise, you'll be uploading a CSV file. They can connect your user based off of their email, phone number. You probably won't have their advertiser ID or Facebook ID or page ID, um, but you'll most likely have their first and last name. The more information you have on the person, the more accurate that connection is. Um, they have a little template for you to download so you can use their file to put the information in to re-upload. But what it's gonna do is have you uh, upload that information just by drag and drop. Uh, and it will tell you how many people from your list it was able to match. So if you upload 5,000, it might give you back and match it to 4,837. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much, Jonathan. And thank you everyone for joining us today. And if you have any more questions, feel free to email us and you will get the recording and the you know slides for this webinar. Yep, absolutely. And we will have the slides and recording posted on our website later today uh, or early tomorrow morning. So you can find, again, that refresh information there. So thank you, Madhu and Jonathan, for being with us today. Great presentation. A lot of great stuff that we haven't heard before on the boot camp. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and for those that you can apply this to not just the holidays, but any event that's coming up, maybe it's Valentine's or spring break or other stuff. So a lot of great uh, information you can apply to your business throughout the year. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, just a reminder, everybody, next Tuesday, 9 a.m. is our next boot camp. Until then, everybody have a great week, and we'll see Bye. you soon. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.